So, John, I got to get back to this because you talked about uh, betrayal, which is something I'm very familiar with in my life. So many acts of betrayal happen, and you don't expect it to happen on a corporate level, you know, especially someone in your position, founder of the company. Maybe you can get into that a little bit more. Well, we, um, Papa John's was. John, you, you're hitting on a point that's uh, it's important to me, you know. A lot of times I have a fairly big platform and I talk about a lot of different things, but some people say, Michael, stay out of politics. You know, you're in a different space, stay out of politics. And I try to explain them. When I'm talking about things that impact your life, issues that impact your life, it's not politics. These are important issues that you need to be made aware of. And, you know, I, will, I would love to know from your perspective, you, you know, very successful guy, you got good vision, good perception of things. I feel this country is in a lot of trouble. I really do. I mean, from the top up, one, one of the things that troubles me so much is the divisiveness. And, you know, I always say, you know, the divisiveness, it starts at the top and it trickles down to people all over. And the divisiveness in this country is at a point where I, I have, I'm 71 years old. I've never witnessed anything like this. And I grew up on the street, you know, 20 years on the street. And uh, we have a, a dearth of leadership. You know, people are in the wrong places for the, in, in, a, in serious places for the wrong reasons. Qualified people are not, it's not the uh, norm anymore. You know, it's inclusiveness, which I agree. But you still have to have the right people at the right job so that you can serve the people properly. And, um, you know, I'm a very optimistic guy, really. And my wife sometimes, she says, oh, everything is great with you all the time. I always tell her, don't worry, no problem. But I'm pessimistic about the outlook of America. It, it doesn't change who I am, but I see that we're in decline. And it's, it's very troublesome. You mentioned China and, and, you know, all these other countries that were friendly to us now that are turning the other way. So not only do we have a problem in foreign lands, we have a severe problem here domestically. What's your thoughts on it? Well, I think first is that, you know, we talked earlier, bad leadership is talking the talk and not walking the talk. Mm -hmm. You gotta walk the talk. So let's just start with you and I as exhibit A. We don't wanna do a podcast and say anything divisive, because I agree with you, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. And so um, whenever I'm doing interviews, I try to stay away from you know, anything that's, that's political that people could take the wrong way mm -hmm. or hurtful and be divisive. Um, I stick with, you know, simple fundamentals. Arithmetic's not an opinion. If you print money, you mm -hmm. devalue the dollar and you destroy the middle class. I right. Mean, that's, that's not political, that's just simple. That's arithmetic. happening. Right. Cause and effect. Mm -hmm. you, know, um, you know, you have tornado victims in Kentucky that need support and you just left $85 billion worth of military equipment in Afghanistan. So simple stuff, mm -hmm. um, border, drugs, the sex trafficking, the, the minors, the women down there getting raped. I mean, it's just unfathomable uh, what they're doing by um, this, this drug thing, this, this it's horrible. fentanyl. I mean, it's, it's, it's scary, you know. Um, so I like to keep it just simple cause and effect. And, we do a lot of holistic work. I have a lot of respect for modern medicine, mm -hmm. uh, doctors, but that system's broke, you know, and you know, the, the same people that own processed food companies own pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the processed foods, it won't kill you, but it will make you sick and eventually kill you. And once it gets you sick, then you get on the prescriptions and mm -hmm. the pharmaceuticals. So that's a vicious circle. Uh, to get people in a situation where they don't eat right, they don't take care of themselves. I think you look amazing for 71. I wouldn't have got that. I wouldn't have been within 15, 20 years of that number. Um, and then they get them on prescription drugs, and that is just a spiral downward. Of all the work we've done with stem cells and <clears throat> capillary work and oxygen in the blood and spiritual work, 
work on the stomach microbiome. The one thing we that I've come across that's been kind of fascinating is a guy named Joe Dispenza. I uh, just wrote a book called Supernatural. He's got four or five books out. He's an interesting guy. He um, he's he's kind of a he's a doctor chiropractor. He's also very scientific. And he's also an artist, and his work is like mind blowing in the sense that we talk about this three dimensional world um, that our five senses pick up because the creator just simply slowed the vibration down to the speed of light where we can comprehend what's going on. And he tries, he talks about a higher dimension, the, the divine, uh, the source, the creator. And he, he and I agree, um, and I love this guy to death, that we're not going to solve today's problems with yesterday's ideas. I think Einstein mm -hmm. said this level of problems today are not going to be solved by yesterday's mindset or something like that. And um, so I, th I think it's going to take a, a, a level of higher vibration, higher fre frequency to solve the three-dimensional problems. Now, when I refer to the higher dimension, I'm talking about um, source, creator of, of love, joy, happiness, thoughtfulness, kindness, mutual respect, um, you know, compassion. I think until we get ourselves as a species um, to function at a higher level of consciousness and awareness, and we keep playing this game of device, divisiveness and three-dimensional. I found it very disturbing last week when Fox came out where values, religion, mm -hmm. principles were 60 and now they're 30. Yeah, all the way down. Um, and the money's gone from 18 to 43. I think it's number one. Mm -hmm. And don't get me wrong, money's nice. We got money to, to survive. But um, that, you know, you're going to have ups and downs in life. Um, trust me, I just went through three years of you know pretty uh, pretty interesting, pretty tough time. I think it was good for me. Um, I think it was unfair. It was not right, but life's not fair. So you know, and the people that did this will so there'll be. A, you know, there's a system in place. They're, they're going to play the penalty and probably are paying the, the penalty. I think we need to be in a situation where we, we keep the conversation uh, non-divisive, but the, the folks out there, they don't get one piece of this. The, the left leap um, at the top have a hatred for America and a disrespect um, for humanity that, that you and I and they can't comprehend. I mean, you know, the folks out there, they have a a bad weekend, they had a few too many beers, or maybe they shouldn't have smoked a joint, or you know, they heard their wife, they got in a fight with their wife. I mean, normal you know, stuff. Yeah. Stuff. You know, the stuff that they do with the border and sex trafficking and devaluating the dollar, it's terrifying. And for some reason, well, they control the media, they control academia, they control the medical, mm -hmm. I mean, they control the judges. I mean, the uh, elite left is bound and determined to destroy America. And, um, you know, if you, if you want to destroy America, destroy the principles and values. But if you really want to destroy America, um, hurt the youth, hurt our children, you know. Um, and what they're, what, you know, the stuff they're pumping in these kids' head, it's crazy. This stuff's crazy. I mean, it's just... A, but John, did you ever think in your lifetime there would be a time when schools, administration, government, is trying to take parents' rights away from uh, parenting their children. No. And basically, that's what they're doing. The reason I kind of got lucky and turned out sort of whatever I turned out to be is is my parents and grandparents yeah. and my teachers. You know, I, mean, I had great teachers, but they complimented my parents' efforts. They didn't, you know, d d divide it up. And, and uh, th this is crazy what they're teaching these kids. And it, it has an impact on their lives that's going to be extremely negative. Yeah. You can't have prosperity if you don't have an increase in productivity. You know, something faster, quicker, better, more innovative, more fun, more entertaining. Um, and that comes from your independent critical judgment. Um, the, um, uh, as Einstein said, the uh, imagination is more po powerful than uh, the intellect. Imagination is your independent critical judgment to green to dream and think big. I mean, that's that's independent critical judgment. And they're teaching if you don't think the way we think, mm -hmm. you know, our clique, our, our group, our tribe, then you get ostracized, you get attacked. That's every great business in this country had a different idea. They thought it was they had a better way of doing something, a better mousetrap, more innovative, faster. So their mindset, their independent critical judgment that made them successful 
was thinking out of the box, you know, completely different than uh, normal, not thinking the way everybody else thought. So mm -hmm. I just don't know how we're going to continue to go along with this ideology and not have the consequences. What I mean by consequences? I mean, people are not happy. I mean, that's showing up in, you know, the depressing mm -hmm. drugs and, you know, suicides, lack of self-respect. And then it shows up again on standard living. The, if you take a, a mindset of socialism and Marxism where it's entitlement and you don't have to earn, the standard of living in the middle class goes down. And that's what I found very troubling is we had two years of this nonsense. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, of printing money and being irresponsible and leaving billions here and wasting billions there. And um, the, we didn't have a red wave. I mean, we didn't, you know, yeah. we, and, and the, expected the, it, but we didn't have it. Yeah. The electorate still does not understand that these policies are self-destructive for the middle class. They don't understand that yet. Now, will they in another two years? I don't know. I saw the numbers in inflation. Groceries are up 8% over last year. That's over two years of absurd. So I, I don't know where this is going to end. Well, I don't understand how, you know, people can be in charge of our economic welfare that never ran a business. I've been in government for 50 years, probably, you know, never had a balance of checkbook. I mean, how could you get out there and, and run the biggest economy in the world well, you, and you, do you, it properly? You can't really have empathy for anybody can't. unless you've uh, walked a mile in their shoes. Yeah. And so, you know, we got people, uh, we got the inmates running the asylum here. Exactly. I mean, uh, they just don't have any understanding of, um, you know, how the principles of capitalism and, uh, you know, you say trickle down, you know, they act like that's crazy, you know, but I mean, we didn't create 10,000 millionaires by not building a big company. So you right. build a big company, yeah, you know, the shareholders did great, but also, you know, everybody from soup to nuts benefited their life financially and, you know, hopefully educationally. And well, listen, for me, you know, my biggest concerns and I think the biggest problems are obviously a lack of leadership, but when you're trying to um, break up the family, which is basically what you're doing, number one, Number two, you're trying to silence people that disagree with you, take away our basic rights of free speech, and then third, weaponize you know, our law enforcement people to go after your enemies. When those three things, the combination of those three things is lethal as far as I'm concerned. And my fear is, I'm not worried for me, John, you know, and you're probably not for you either, but I have seven kids, I have six grandkids, one on the way, yeah. And I worry about their future in America. So when I talk about these things, it's for a deep concern for the welfare of not only my kids and grandkids, but, you know, everyday people. You know, what is this country going to look like? And if we don't remedy this and we don't fix it, it's, it's not bright. The future's not bright. Yeah, back to the, the, the Spenza, and there's a book David Hawkins wrote, um, Power Versus Force. And the premise of the book is low levels of frequency, hatred, anger, jealousy, envy, don't have the power that compassion and love and joy have. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a parabola shape. And so you take Christ or Buddha or whoever, you know, your religious person that you idolize or you look up to. How many folks did Christ touch? You know, Buddha, you know, mm -hmm. Muhammad. So one person with the right energy, billions of people. Absolutely. And so if you look at it from a um, two plus two mathematical situation, we're, we're going to lose this battle. Mm -hmm. If you look at it from a parabola perspective, that if we can change our level of consciousness and change the people around us, our kids, our family, our loved ones, level of consciousness, then we can change the world. But I, I don't think we're going to change the world tit for tat in a three-dimensional warfare. I think we've already mm -hmm. proven we're going to lose that. And um, I have kids and grandkids as well. And um, it, it is frightening to know that we just had a shooting last week in Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah. Well, that's the same block. Once or twice a week, I ride my bike on. Mm. You know, and the, the guy that got shot in there, the head guy, uh, a friend of mine, Tommy Elliott, he gave me my first $2 million loan mm. back in 92. Nobody else believed in me. Really? Got shot. I mean, like, I mean, you know, we just, we're still real. Is he one of the, the yeah, guy? He, one of the guys got shot, oh. one of the uh, five people. Wow. The folks that work my security detail, uh, Louisville Police Department folks, they have I mean, it's shaking the whole, the whole, my whole community up right now, shaking me up. We're still shook up. Um, 
Uh, and just the tentacles of all the networking people you know about it, having an incident like this mm. and know that you're riding your bike by where this just happened. Mm. And, 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 uh, but, um, you know, this, um, this, this has not got good consequences if we don't change our ways. And the, what I don't understand, I've never understood, and, and I talked to Robert Kennedy Jr. Mm -hmm. I talked to the folks over at Trump. I'm friends with Ron DeSantis. I mean, I, you know, I had uh, uh, coffee with the Speaker of the House. Kevin McCarthy last mm. week. I mean, I know the players. Um, I know how BlackRock and um, you know State Street, um, the Gates Foundation, how they you know all they they own all these companies. How they control? They have actually have a monopoly on things. I, I get that piece, but um, I don't understand this mindset of let's let's destroy humanity. Let's destroy America. I mean, if you want to go to any other place in the world. It doesn't have a, uh, people think we have a democracy, we don't have a democracy, we have a constitutional republic. republic yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you win the election, but you take an oath to the Constitution. Those countries are everywhere, and they're not doing so hot. And why you would want to destroy the, the I mean, where do you not go if they destroy this country? You know, we, have, we almost got to go build our own country where we do have values and principles and right from wrong and mutual respect and love of our fellow man. We got to find some place where we can go and exercise uh, those attributes. Um, but the question I ask is, okay, you know, Biden's not in charge, you know, um, is, is it the agencies? Is it the Rothschilds? Is it State well, Street? Who's, yeah, but, who's pulling the, who's the puppeteer on this thing? And, but, I, and I still don't have that answer. All right, but let me ask you this, John. I understand why people in power want to have control. They want to stay in power. But why would corporate America, you know, you at, at one time being, a, you know, the position you were in, why would corporate America support people that are basically destroying the country, the very people that they depend upon to buy their products. Why would corporate America? Because they all seem to support, you know, progressives now. That's where the big money is. Why? I think they want to be hip. You know, they want to be in trend, I guess. Um, they don't want to offend, you know, the, the vocal minority, which is usually 1%, you know, control way more than the majority. But, I look back at Papa John's, you did, these are just weak people. They just don't have any backbone. They don't have any courage. And, you know, they, they're, not, they're not principle centered. They take the easy way out and they don't want bad headlines. Uh, a, B is with <clears throat> literally tens of trillions of dollars by BlackRock and these other institutions like the Budweiser right now. Mm -hmm. I've heard numbers of 20% decrease in sales. You know, you think that would yeah. get their attention. But you know, have these oak financial mm -hmm. institutions that have trillions of dollars that prop that stock up. So, you know, I guess that's a short-term solution to um, Budweiser's problems that they got somebody that's going to kind of cover them while they practice their wokeism. But um, if there's enough, you know, folks in America that say I'm not going to tolerate that kind of um, nonsense and I'm going to boycott Budweiser, I think the Budweiser case, the Disney case, was really. Um, uh, uh, interesting, um, and DeSantis just whooped their ass. Yeah, you know he just kicked their butt. It's, he's just a great governor. I love, I'm a resident of Florida, and he's just a, he's a great governor. Mm -hmm. um, but the Budweiser thing, um, you know, I think it's going to make people think uh, think hard and long, and they really want to go along with this nonsense and and, um, and destroy their business. But that's that's what the the left does is when you don't play their game you're not in their ideology, then they boycott your product. So this is kind of turnabout's fair play, is that if you don't, if you practice wokeism, we're not going to buy your products. So I don't know where, where that's going to shake out, but that's going to be Yeah, but you know, when you look at it the other way, you know, they're in a minority. Why do, why would corporate America cater to a minority? Because they scream the loudest? Bad press? Because they're not the major people buying their products. It's not a lack of intellect. You know, it's not a lack of intellect. I was with, <clears throat> we do a lot of work on study on stem cells, because mm -hmm. I think stem cells is the future. Mm -hmm. And um, I was lucky enough that I had the head of Harvard Medical Cancer and Stem Cell. You know, they wanted me to invest in some things, and just a great guy, a uh, very nice man, been at Harvard for 40 years. Harvard's the pinnacle of the pinnacle of these intellectual, you know, I call them IYs, but anyway. 
And so he's figured out how to combine a certain acid. I won't tell you what it is because it's a recipe mm -hmm. with the culture and stem cells and it. it's anti-aging. It's interesting. Uh, he didn't have enough data to support where he's headed with it, but it's, it's promising. And so mm -hmm. I was looking at it. So I had extra time with the guy who was on the airplane with him. And I said, um, hey, shits and grins. I thought I'd, I said, you know, what do you think about this Fauci guy? Seems like he got himself in trouble. He goes, yeah. He said, we've been friends for decades. And he said, he's just a great guy. And, you know, we all knew from the get-go it came out of the lab, but, you know, we told him not to go <laughs> along with that. But now this is his friend, the head of Harvard Medical. I'm like, I couldn't believe he just said that. That's a great guy, Fauci. Yeah, great guy. And by the way, and I said, but you know, the side effects of this vaccine, mm. the, the deaths and all this. And, you know, I said, he goes, well, the pharmaceuticals lied to the FDA and the FDA lied to the CDC and the CDC lied to, he runs the committee overseeing COVID, lied to us. And I said, well, what the hell did you do? And you found out they lied to you. And he said, well, I got mad. I said, you got mad? <laughs> He said, what would you have done? I said, I'd have taken every board of director of those pharmaceuticals out back and, you know, I'd locked her ass up. He said, well, I can't do that. I'll lose my tenure. You know, it's not politically correct. So here you got the head of Harvard Medical that knows that the whole thing was a farce. Came out of a lab. The vaccine is poison. It's doing more. And they're still going along with it. They're still giving this to kids. Now, that came from the horse's mouth you know, less than four minute conversation. And so you go, how do these companies go along with it? They're just weak. People just don't have, they're not principle centered where they have enough solid sense of self, but they're not gonna give up that tenure. And the people that do whistleblow and, and do yell at the top of the mountain for the truth, they get, um, you know, they get crucified. So play with people's life. John, I have to say this, and, and, and you know, uh, these people are worse than guys on the street. I'm telling you, we wouldn't do some of the things that, they, oh. that they're doing. Oh, I can deal with you because I know what I'm dealing with. Exactly. exactly we, what I'm dealing we don't with. Pretend, <laughs> we don't pretend to be something else. We were who we were. But when you're in a, a position of trust and you're responsible for the welfare of the people under you, they're depending upon you. They put you in office and you just totally, totally abuse them like that. I mean, cause their lives, put their very lives at stake and their livelihoods. I, I, just, I can't process that. And so I was trying to tell you earlier, the, the elite left, again, they drank 10 beers on the weekend, or they had a fight with their wife, or they cussed in front of their kids. You know, that's what we think mm -hmm. is a bad day at the office. These people have no regard for humanity. I mean, they just do not love their fellow man. And so they have no problem compromising what little value system they have or principles they have, because they don't have any courage to stand mm -hmm. up and, you know, do the right thing. And that's, you know, whether you like Trump or not, the, the amount of light he shed on what was really going on, we owe that man a great deal of gratitude because the reason they don't want him in is because he knows he's going after their ass. Yeah. I mean, you know, they, I mean, he, he just, he, he knows the game now and he knows what he's up against. And they know that they, they, he knows the game. And, yeah. They put him back in office. I mean, the one thing he didn't get, the two things he didn't get done that I think he would have done in his second term was he, this agency thing's a problem. We don't have three branches of government. We have four mm -hmm. agencies. The other thing is I think he would have fixed the deficit. I think he would have got, I would think he would start turning into that. Sorry, term. say that again. The deficit. I think, oh, you yeah. Know, the 32 trillion. I think he mm -hmm. would start, you know, trying to shrink that a little bit. But, um, you know, we're going to have, good thing about uh, future leaders, whether it's DeSantis or Trump, Guys like Herschel Walker, we got uh, Mark Robinson over in the mm -hmm. Carolinas. Um, we have a lot of great leaders coming up that I think are principle centered and are going to do a great job for us. So, John, I got to get back to this because you talked about uh, betrayal, which is something I'm very familiar with in my life. So many acts of betrayal happen, and you don't expect it to happen on a corporate level, you know, especially someone in your position, founder of the company. Maybe you can get into that a little bit more. Well, we, um, Papa John's was the left elite's worst nightmare. Started with why, that. why is that? It was the American dream. You know, the, the elite left are trying to destroy America. He mm -hmm. destroyed America by destroying the American dream, or the hopes of the American dream, and destroying our youth, which they're doing both. We did it the hard way. We did it the long way. We started out with nothing. Um, built a big company. It was, um, 
based on you know constitutional values and our framers mindset which is critical um, in this country and um, you know I'm on the TV every two minutes on national TV you know I, I took a pretty heavy stand that conservative principles and values and hard work and ethics pay off in the long run and that the left didn't want to hear that so when when we were as high up as we were with the notoriety and the prestige and just the attention, I could feel, you can feel it, you can, you know, the phone starts acting up, you know, um, people are, you know, just, you can feel it. And let me ask you this, you feel people from, from within your company, you, but do you think there was an outside influence well, on the company? That's the piece I missed, um, mm -hmm. is you know when something's up. I thought it was the elite left. You know, I still think they had something to do with it. I never thought it'd be an inside job. I hired Steve Ritchie at six dollars an hour, and um, you know, when he left, he was making six million a year. He lives in a seven million dollar home. I just never saw Steve Ritchie and Mark Shapiro and Olivia Curtley and my board. I didn't see them hire an agency. Agency set me up paint me as a racist with a false narrative and destroying, uh, you know, destroying my career. I, I didn't see the inside part. I didn't see the Brutus aspect of it. Mm -hmm. I knew something was up. I knew that I was under the microscope and that one little hiccup, they were going to hurt me, but I didn't think, it, I didn't see the inside job of this until after the fact. That was the hardest part, figuring out what happened. Like, how did this happen? You know, this is crazy. I mean, 34 years, 5,000 stores. You, you misconstrue one word and they completely destroy your life. I didn't understand. And so we filed a lawsuit and we got to the data and then we got the tape. Then we got the tape where they're saying we set him up. Aha. And then we got folks in, in depositions and discovery that, yeah, they were plotting to get rid of John. And so all that came in. It all and came out. All came out. I mean, we got, we got these guys by the throat. I mean, they're guilty. Um, as guilty can be, and they know that. Um, and, and also, I'm not happy about what they did, <clears throat> and that's important. Um, but it was February, March of 19, where I had to I had to see it, where the people I loved that I made all I didn't make these people millionaires, made them tens of millions of dollars. The company was worth three and a half billion. The people that I protected with my life actually did this because I didn't want to see it. I didn't. It was too hurt too painful to see that people that I love would do something like this. I mean, paint somebody as a racist in today's society that took care of you. I mean, and that's when I really just like was just like I was lifting weights, but I really couldn't lift much weights. Mm -hmm. um, I'd go for walks and I just really didn't want to walk. And then I guess March, April of 19, I went shit. They did it. This is what happened. It's like, okay. Let's get on with it. And um, it was out here. Um, and there's the mountain up here. And the mountain's covered with snow. It was melting. It was uh, springtime, but it was still snowing. So, okay. High school baseball coach, Jordan Zimmer, and all the folks, they were like you, they're athletic and fit. So it's time to get back on the horse and get, you know, get, get your act together. And um, that's when we just said, okay, you know, so we're going to climb this mountain. And that was the first mountain I climbed mm -hmm. after the after the whole thing went down, but that wasn't what they did, because it didn't take, I didn't like it, um, didn't understand it, thought it was unfair, but, you know, I wasn't never Papa John in my mind, I was always John, I was always mm -hmm. Beth Ackerson's son, you know, I was always my grandfather's grandson, I mean, that, those principles and values never left, the whole Papa John gig, you know, it's like Kid Rock, I think his name's Bobby or something at all. Mm -hmm. He's not Kid Rock. He's you know I wasn't Papa John. I was always so that didn't really phase me. Um, I was angry. I was pissed off because I thought it was unfair and it was unjust. And it wasn't right. But the betrayal piece that that shook the shit out of me when I finally figured out what in the hell that people that I care about did. Was it jealousy, John? Oh yeah, yeah. You know, when you're Papa John, you get hundreds of millions of dollars. And, you're fit and you get all this attention and you know yeah you get everybody's wants your time and your energy mm -hmm. and you know yeah they're stroking your narcissism stroking your reflective sense of self you know but jealousy 
you know, I think in the and I think it's biblical jealousy and envy are the, the worst traits. Love Absolutely. Is the, love is the best and the most powerful. So mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you know, I used to say on the street, you know, I'm Italian so I could say this, so don't anybody <laughs> get upset, you know. One of the things in the in the mob life is that you understand jealousy sometimes. But in a hey, I wish I had what that guy had, you know, I wish I could live like that or uh, you know, something like that. It's okay, it's normal. But on the street is I wish I had what you had, and I don't want you to have it. That's envy. That's, that's when people get cutthroat. And I saw so much of that on the street, John, you know, and, and, and all life, people die over that. They die over it. Uh, but you know what? It's just as cutthroat on your level. I mean, I, I, again, to wrap your head around this, <laughs> you, you're a good person. You come from a great family. You work hard. You treat people right. You build a huge company. And one, one little thing like that. And I'm sorry, it's, for me, it's a little thing. You know, you, sometimes by mistake you insult somebody. All right, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. Look at my life, look at my history, look what I've built. You know, judge me by that. But to take everything away, it's just, I, I, I cannot, it, worse than the street. Yeah. Well, worse. I can deal with you. Yeah, it's I don't want to have to deal with you. I'm going to bring a big the bazooka to the gunfire. The least <laughs> I know what the hell I'm dealing with yeah. is when you're dealing with somebody you don't know what you're dealing yeah. with. That it gets, but hey, life's not fair. Well, so you let's, see, see, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens in the next two years, the next five years. Well, yeah, I, I got to tell you, go ahead. you got to think like a mobster. You know, I'll tell you why. <laughs> no, when you're successful, mm. you always got to be leery of everybody around you. I had to worry about the guys on the street around me. I had to worry about law enforcement. So I was always on my guard, always. And I think uh, someone in a position like you, you have to be the same, even your best friends. Yeah, I'm not gonna live like that. You know, I it's mean, hard. people yeah, around it's... me, I mean, you, you know, you're doing something with a business deal or somebody gets close, you, 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 run, the, you run the checks, but I'm, I'm not gonna go around life worrying about somebody, you know. I mean, I'm not stupid. I don't yeah. put myself in, in positions that physically or mentally or emotionally that I can get hurt too bad. Um, but I just like to look at the positive in people. I like, I just think, you know, if you stay positive and you're upbeat and you're good to people and you treat yeah. people with respect and kindness, I think that's your biggest, um, biggest weapon against jealousy and envy. Um, but jealousy and envy are, are the worst traits there is. Um, and the problem is, you know, I made it look easy. So yeah. they go, well, he's easy. I mean, because so anybody could do yeah, it. Yeah, and <laughs> you, you get and when things are really good, I get bored. I get yeah. complacent. I like it when I'm in the room cause and broke. I like <laughs> it when I I can't make payroll. I like shit. I like just dealing with tough times. Mm -hmm. And so things are got good. Well, you get really good at something, and you get really really good at something, and then you make it look easy, and then you get com you know complicit yeah. a little bit. Complacent. Then yeah. people are going, well, I'll just or complacent, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. But people would then go, well, if he's doing it like, you know, why well, I can do this. And so, sure. you know, but it's, um, it's, uh, it's been, you know, it's been a great education. I don't want to live, uh, live this again. I think it's, uh, makes you more humble, more gracious. Um, it'll make me enjoy the next ride even more. You know, and that's what I'm looking forward to is the next ride. And, you know, the, the three or four things in the next venture are going to be, it's got to be in my soul. It's got to be authentic. It's got to mm -hmm. be something I'm like, you know, I love the holistic medicine. I love the dispenser work. I love anything that makes, um, two is it's got a better humanity. You know, it's got to make, it's got to, I don't really want to do processed foods or mm -hmm. alcohol or tobacco or I want to do, you know, lawyers where they don't, you know, they do more harm than good. I want to do something that's better in humanity. Mm -hmm. um, I, want, I want something that's big. I like scalable stuff. You mm -hmm. know, I like big stuff and uh, something that you know is sustainable i'm not having to feed it every week with finances so those uh, four attributes haven't come to fruition yet so is there something in mind though do you have your sights so, set on something we started papa's farm a year ago right. um two years ago we did a pilot plant kind of played with it this year we're kind of doing a much bigger version of that that's organic farming um uh, fruits vegetables selfish that. reason do you ever think of the wine business um <laughs> the I, I do like Napa, uh, and I appreciate the invite out to Napa yeah. this uh, this summer because we're going to take you up on that. Yeah, Two things you told me: you take me to Italy, see Italy through the eyes of Italian, and <laughs> I, 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 guaranteed. And I'm telling you, you you won't have a better time with anybody else but me. Yeah. So, I get a trip to Italy with you, yeah. and I get a trip to Napa. 
Tryptonite. You got it. Mm, yeah. So it's on film. <laughs> well, maybe, uh, are you a wine drinker? I don't drink much wine. No? Yeah. I would if drink you go to some Napa, of your wine. You will. Pardon me? If you go to Napa, you will. Yeah. But you're going to enjoy my wine, Francis wine. As a matter of fact, I'm going to send you a case. How's that? I would love that. <laughs> right. I would love that. But uh, yeah. thanks for having me. Well, listen, it's been, uh, it's been a pleasure. And uh, hopefully we strike up a friendship now. Uh, Italy, Napa. Stem Where are you taking and, me? Stem, stem cells. cells in Costa Rica. I need a, I, I got to at least live as long as my dad, 103. Yeah, yeah. I think you're well on your way. All right. Yeah. Well, so. John, Thank pleasure. You. God bless. Thank you very much. God bless. Mm -hmm.